Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Mansions of Madness, second edition. This was sent to me by Asmodee, uh, and is designed by uh, Nikki Valens, based on design by Corey Kniska. Uh, and look at this massive box, and this is second edition. Mansions of Madness is a cooperative game of investigation and horror inspired by the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. During each game, one to five players explore a location to unravel a mystery. Players must work together to overcome the challenges presented to them by a fully integrated companion app. All players are on the same team and win or lose the game together. The investigator's ultimate goal is to explore the scenario's map and piece together the evidence and clues required to solve the mystery. Let me show you how to play. So Mansions of Madness requires a free companion app. Uh, you can download it on Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, Amazon App Store. Uh, you can download the app for Mac or Windows. Uh, basically, if you have a smartphone or tablet or access to a computer, um, you should be able to get the app for free. It's very useful and makes this game very, very easy to run through. Each player will choose an investigator. Here we've got William York, the gravedigger, and we've got Rita Young, the athlete. Um, there's several different characters you can play as, all with different stats and uh, different abilities. And so you press new game on the app, and we'll, and as you can see, they have different scenarios you can play. We'll just go through the first one, Cycle of Eternity. Also, the reason why I'm filming an iPad screen is because I want you to actually see how the game works when you're interacting with the iPad and with the game, as opposed to just me showing this on the screen uh, in full resolution. Uh, so, if we select our investigators, Let's say we do a two-player game, and we'll choose uh, Yorick and Rita. So just click the characters that you are playing with, and click Gain Starting Items. Here we get the 2x4, the Holy Cross, the Kerosene Lantern, the King James Bible, and Feed the Mind. Uh, and you have decks of items here, and they're in alphabetical order, or you have to sort them in alphabetical order. You take out the items and spells you need, and then you distribute them amongst the characters as you'd like. The item is a different thing, like the King James Bible as an action. You or another investigator within range may discard one face down horror. You got like the Holy Cross, where you roll one additional die uh, while uh, resolving a will test. Two by four, uh, you brace the door with the board, flip this card and place it against the door to your space. So they all do different things um, throughout the game. Each investigator will also start with two clues and I'll explain what these do in a second. But now we can continue our setup. So they go through a whole prologue, and there's even voice acting, and it's really well done. I'm not gonna uh, have you listen to everything, but it's a really impressive production for a free app. Uh, we have the rooms we need, and you're gonna, they tell you exactly what to do. Um, so you read all this text out loud, you read that flavor text uh, as you go, and then it'll tell you which rooms to place. So here we put the entry hall, bathroom tiles, and a wall uh, on, on the mat. So, following the game's instructions, here we have our entry hall, and we have our bathroom tile. Also, the game directed us to put a wall token right here, that way we know that's not a door. Then, as the game instructs, take your investigator figures and place them inside the main hall. Like so. Now that's how you start the game, but before we go into the app and start following through, um, I want to just go through the rules of the game. Um, during each round, there are two phases. The investigator phase, where you perform actions to move about the game board, explore your surroundings, and attack monsters. And the mythos phase, and that indicates monster actions and generates mythos effects. These effects might spawn monsters or raise other challenges that you have to overcome. After the mythos phase of each round, investigators start a new round beginning with the investigator phase. Uh, you just keep doing game rounds until you have won or lost the game. During the investigator phase, each investigator performs up to two actions. Performing actions is the primary way in which uh, investigators will move about the game board and interact with their surroundings. Uh, you can take turns in any order of your choice. Um, on your turn, you perform up to two actions, then the next player takes their turn, and so on until everyone's done a turn. Um, during the investigator phase, you can do the following actions. You can move, so you can move up to two spaces, moving one space at a time, from one space to an adjacent space. You cannot move through walls or impassable borders uh, unless an effect specifically allows it. The game will instruct you to place down explore tokens and it'll explain what they mean. So on the left wall of the entry hall sits a table with a small pile of papers. Place a search token as indicated. So if I, once I uh, look at the corresponding spot, 
I can put a search token right on there. That indicates that's something I can explore with an explore action. It also tells us there's, there's a mysterious painting of a nighttime landscape on the right wall. So we would put another search token over there. Like so. Very video gamey. Now I actually mixed these up. Those question marks are actually search tokens. These are explore tokens. This is an explore token. Look, the silence is broken by the muffled shouts and sounds of crashing pots and pans coming from the door on your right. And so we put down an explore token on this door. And you notice a shelf stacked with books and other objects nearby. Pushing it in front of the door could prevent someone or something from coming through. Place a barricade as indicated. So if we go down here to the main entrance, here's a little barricade tile if we want to keep monsters away. And up there, we have a sight token. Uh, an investigator in the hall corner may reveal the adjacent area. So going over here, let me pull out the sight token and place it here. And then four other doors lead into the mansion. You can place explore tokens on all of them. This indicates uh, how, where you are gonna uh, further adventure out into the mansion. And they said to put them here, 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 and here, right on all the doors. And also there's surrounding furniture to barricade another door. So place another barricade token right here. So let's go through some possible actions. Uh, let's say uh, we wanted to explore. Um, so maybe Rita uh, is on this space, so she explores. So what you do is go onto the app, click the explore tile, and uh, let's do it. That's our first action. And we reveal a warmly lit room uh, with a pool table. Uh, so you discard the explore token and you're gonna place the billiards room tile there. And that's how you explore a room. Ta-da! As you explore a new room, the app will tell you to do things. Like for example, right now it's telling us there's a large chest catching our eye. And you place a search token here. I'm just gonna expedite this and just place all the tokens down in here. And also the app lets you move one space into the explored area. Uh, after doing the explore. So let's say Rita decides to move into that room. That's an explore action. Now let's try a search action. Since Rita is on the same space as a search token, she can do the search action. So let's go over to the app, click it. A large chest is tucked behind the bar. Shall we search? I think we shall. You move to open the chest, but find it locked with a heavy padlock. The device is sturdy, but you believe you could pick the lock. Tap to attempt the puzzle using observation. Ah, and so here we have a puzzle. So Rita's observation is three, and since this puzzle requires observation, that means Rita gets three moves on this puzzle. This particular puzzle is a lock puzzle, so obviously you're trying to get this to move into there. Now, since this one is not particularly difficult, we can do it in three steps. You can go one, two, three. Oh, actually, that would take. Actually, that would have taken four. Whoops. So actually, this wasn't completed. She would have had to do only three steps, um, and then had to take. Someone else would have to do another action to finish the puzzle. Uh, my mistake. But uh, yeah, that would that would have actually taken four. But she actually had only three observation. But let's say we solve the puzzle and see what happens. The padlock pops open, and inside there's a grotesque statuette of an octopoid dragon and something else that might be of use, gain the whiskey common item, the grotesque stone unique item, and one clue. So Rita gets a clue, and she also gets whiskey and the grotesque stone. Uh, and then the search token gets discarded from the board. Bye-bye. Another action you could do is if you are on the same space as another investigator, you can exchange um, items between each other. So let's say uh, Yorick goes over one and then does a trade action, uh, let's say he wanted to give her, take the whiskey from her and then give her, say, I don't know, the 2 by 4 Any freely exchange items between the characters, that's a trade action. Like I briefly mentioned before, some cards will let you do actions as well. Like the whiskey we just got, you can discard up to two face down horror. Horror is a type of damage you get. Uh, but with this particular uh, item, if you do that, you have to flip the card. Now, I won't spoil what's on the back. Um, but sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. Let's pretend that uh, Yorick here was on this space already and wanted to do the search action. Um, he would go ahead and click on it on the app. 
and it would the hall continues deeper into the mansion uh you may reveal the adjacent area so this lets you look and see the next area um without doing anything the hall continues from the bathroom hall place the hall end tile uh, so that lets us see uh what else is here uh, but it's not an explore action like so uh and then uh oh someone acting in a hurry has knocked over a stack of papers place a search token i'll go ahead and just put all this stuff in here without going through every single thing there is a search token and a bunch of explore tokens for the next couple doors now let's look into a mythos phase end the investigator phase and let's see what happens um this one, there's no immediate effect. That's boring. Let's skip ahead a bit so I can show you some combat. In this Mythos phase, this Mythos event affects the investigator who has the most clues. Uh, and in our case, uh, currently, uh, Rita has the most clues. You struggle to comprehend the breadth of your accumulated clues, and you're going to do a, a lore check. If you pass, well, let's roll first. Rita's lore stat is three, so she'll take three dice and roll them. Uh, and she has at least one success, which is the requirement uh, for the test. If you pass, you're convinced you're on the right track. But if she failed, she would have had to have discarded one of her clues. Now, what these magnifying glass results mean is you can use your clue tokens to convert this to a success, uh, but you have to spend them to do that. And then you hear a blood-curdling scream and the sound of tearing flesh from another room, and then silence. Uh, you are too late to save the butler. Each investigator suffers two horror. So, if we look on our card here, this is how much damage you can take, and this is how much horror you can take. Um, so she's gonna, everyone's gonna take two horror. Now, how damage and horror works in this game is you draw from a horror or damage deck, and in this case, we suffer two horror. So let's reveal the first one. Ah, it's a minor shock. Resolve immediately, no additional effect, and you flip it face down. Uh, and then this one. It's just another minor shock. Let's see, some of them are a little nastier, like the Horrific Arcana. Uh, you would suffer one additional face down horror for each spell you have. Um, but as you can see, you'll accumulate more horror and uh, you don't want to take too much horror or damage. If you take the full amount of damage, you become wounded and you gain a wounded condition and you discard all your face down damage cards. But while you're wounded, you cannot perform the move action more than once each round. And if a wounded investigator suffers damage equal to their health again, they are dead. As for the horror value, if you suffer enough horror, uh, your investigator becomes insane. When you become insane, you gain an insane condition and discard your face down horror cards. You draw from the insane deck and these all have different things uh, that are on the back. I won't spoil them, um, but they're things that you read and you keep secret. You cannot reveal the back of your card to the other investigators. And I'll say there are ways that there are things that'll make you change the way you play, uh, change the way you win. It's very, very interesting. Um, so um, sometimes if someone goes insane, they might start acting strangely for the rest of the game. If an insane investigator suffers horror again equal to their sanity level, then they die. When a character is eliminated, he drops all their possessions on their space and removes their figure from the board. Uh, and then the remaining investigators have a single additional investigator phase to try to complete their investigation. If they don't, they lose the game. So as soon as someone dies, you all get one extra phase to try to win. Otherwise, too bad. And here's our first creature. Uh, if the door was blocked by a barric barricade, we would discard the barricade. Uh, and this guy is a hunting horror. So now we have our own little friend to join the fun. Whenever a monster appears, it's gonna do something. So he's gonna move three spaces toward the investigator within range with the most items. And then it attacks that investigator. In this case, let's say it is Rita. So he's gonna move onto the same space as her. And then we select the monster attacks. The creature beats his leathery wings and lashes out at you. And you have and Rita has to do a agility uh, test. So looking at her stats, her agility is four. So we grab four die and we're gonna roll them. You gonna be okay, Rita? Oof, no. So that is a fail. Uh, so looking at the uh, app. Um, if you fail, you lose grasp on your possessions, suffer two face down damage. Sometimes you get face down damage instead of uh, face up, meaning you don't know what these will do until something will make you uh, reveal them, which might get you more damage. 
and then she's gonna have to drop two random items. And then each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest horror rating. Um, so yeah, if monsters are still on, if monsters are still on the board, gotta check the range. How range works in this game is range is always a maximum of three spaces, uh, but it cannot go through walls or doors. So in this case, since there's a door here, um, York won't have to do a horror check, but obviously Rita's gonna have to do one because she's right there. So to resolve that horror check, we select the monster and we resolve a horror check with it. In this case, it's doing a whistling noise. Uh, so Rita needs to do a uh, will roll and she's got four dice or four for that because of her stat. Come on, Rita, you can do better this time. So that was a perfect roll. Uh, she totally passes, so she covers her ears and waits for the sound to fade. If she failed, she would have to do a two horror and become dazed, which is another status effect. But in this case, Rita gets past it unscathed. Let's go ahead and end the mythos phase. And let's go into some combat. To attack a monster, you have to be on the same space with them if you have a melee weapon, or if you have a ranged weapon, uh, you can be up to three spaces away as long as a wall or door is not between you and the monster. Uh, even around corners, which is a little strange. Um, but let's say Rita attacks with the two by four. How you do that is you open the monster drawer and we're gonna select the hunting horror and we're going to attack it. Uh, in this case, the two by four is a heavy weapon. So let's attack with a heavy weapon. Um, as the creature roars and thrashes, you swing at its lower extremities. So she's going to do a uh, strength roll plus one and the monster suffers damage equal to your test result. Now Rita's strong as hell, so she gets to roll five dice plus one. There's only five dice. I feel like they should give us more dice, but anyway, uh, let's see how many successes she gets. Woof, that's rough. Okay, so let's say she changes one of these uh, to a success with a clue. And then I gotta roll one more dice. Uh, and let's say she does it again. And uh, I don't know how many clues she has. I'm just showing the, the example here. Anyway, that would be two damage because it says the monster suffers damage equal to, two damage equal to your test result. So you calculate the damage like this: one, two, uh, and that's that. Let's say we did enough attacking where we killed it. So if you did three more damage, uh, the monster is killed, and then you remove it from the board. Goodbye. Aside from a few other details like fire and darkness, but that's all pretty uh, easily explained uh, in the book, and uh, it's dependent on the scenario you're playing. You're basically just trying to win the game. There's a hidden objective and you're trying to unravel the mystery of the game and discover your goal as you go. Um, and then once you've progressed far enough in the investigation, the objective will become revealed and then you have one final task to complete. You win the game if you complete the investigation. So part of the fun of the game and why I don't want to get too far into this is because the fun of it is exploring and seeing what happens. You'll just, you'll uncover a story as you uh, travel throughout the mansion or wherever you are and find the objective that way. And then it becomes a matter of surviving. If you take too long to complete the investigation, the objective might change or become more difficult to accomplish. And if you take too long, you will lose. Otherwise, that's pretty much the game. Just go around, explore, search, interact with things, uh, fight monsters. The app tells you how to do everything. It's very, very handy. Uh, so if you have any questions, it's pretty clear uh, just by playing it. It might be even be easier than me trying to explain it. Uh, but I think going through some of the um, app activities, I think, is can help you understand how the game flows as a physical game with an app. But that's pretty much it. So I've never played the original Mansions of Madness, but the app that runs this game is pretty incredible. It makes setting up super easy, tells you exactly what to do, and I love how it just runs all the actions, the combat, the twists. Everything is super smooth. It just tells you, put this figure here, do this, this is what happens, roll this dice. And you can just focus on playing the game. This is technology that I would love to see incorporated in other games. Uh, if done well, it's really, really cool. Because of the app, your turns and your actions are s extremely straightforward and simple. Uh, it feels satisfying, you know, searching every nook and cranny, uh, of, the, of like the rooms and uncovering the mystery as you go. I love that you don't know the objective right away and you're just sort of finding out as you uncover more shit. Um, I like that the turn order is totally up to you each time because you know, um, sometimes uh, maybe one person might wanna go first to maximize these actions. Um, I do wish 
there are maybe some kind of tokens that could help you keep track of who's already gone, because with more players, sometimes it's hard to remember who is gone already. But, uh, uh, you know, because sometimes I'll turn can get pretty long as you strategize and explore. The game is absolutely dripping with theme. I love the descriptions the game gives you for every single action you do. Uh, it's, sometimes it's horrifying or disgusting, uh, but it really gets you into the theme. Um, the items and spells are all neat. They really fit with the Cthulhu setting. The monster miniatures are really cool, but I'm a little disappointed with the pegs on these. Like, they're very, very flimsy. Uh, this one works okay, but some of them, they, like, they just will not stay on. Uh, they're really, really, they feel a little shoddy, which is too bad because the, the designs on this miniatures are really nice, but, um, I would have honestly just preferred bases instead of these. Like, I know you can keep track of info by, like, you can put, like, a little monster card in here and track the info, but I would have rather just had that separately as a card and had these on bases. Like, these just... Are, they fall, like, as you're moving these around, they fall off. It really is annoying. That's one thing I was a little disappointed with component-wise. The skill rolls are fun, even though dice by nature can be unforgiving. Um, I enjoy that you can use the clues to change your magnifying glass sides. Uh, and, you know, it's fun. It's, it's a game that, you know, with bad rolls, you can just get totally screwed. But you kind of, if you go into that knowing that it's, you know, it's, it's fun. The puzzles that come with the app, I'm not so thrilled with. Like, there, there are sliding block puzzles, there's a lock puzzle I showed on screen. Um, there's like a mastermind-esque kind of game where you're trying to like, figure out the color code. They're simple to do, but it kind of takes away from the experience, because one of you is basically fiddling with the screen, and everyone else is just kind of sitting there. Uh, I get that they're trying to immerse you in the puzzle, but... The, sp the puzzles are very generic. I feel like the game could have easily done without the puzzles. They don't really add much. They're not particularly special. They're very simple. It just feels like filler. Like the first time you do them, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. I unlocked the lock. But every time you have to do it after that, it just, it's kind of tedious. The only significant issue with the app is that there is no undo button. It rarely happens, but sometimes you make a mistake with the app. Like maybe you pick the wrong monster or you accidentally skip text. There's no way to go back. Uh, even if you could go back up to like three steps back, that would help a lot. But right now, there's no way to fix your mistakes. So if you miss something or if you input something wrong, you're kind of screwed. It's a little bit of an oversight, I think. But otherwise though, I cannot stress how much fun this game is as an experience. It might have a few hiccups here and there, but otherwise the app is really incredible. Like. It is your own personal Dungeon Master. From what I understand, the original game, I think somebody had to be the Dungeon Master and didn't get to play. Which sucks, because this lets everyone fully immerse themselves in the experience. The production values on the app are great, it's got great voice acting, music, sound effects and stuff. Uh, or I don't know if it's some music, but it has a nice ambiance. Um, it reduces the need to go, oh wait, what do I need to do? Look up a, a giant rule book. It, do, it takes away a lot of the busy work of this kind of game and just makes you go, you're in it, this is what happens, do this, bam. It's actually really simple to play. Not easy to beat, but really easy to play, which I appreciate. It's also very addicting just exploring like, well, what's inside this chest? What's inside here? What's in this room? Fight the monsters, work together. Uh, get this item. What does this item do? So much fun. Like, it's a blast to play. I highly recommend it. And the app just makes it... It's like the best combination of a video game mixed with the pleasure of a physical tabletop game. Overall, it's a fantastic experience. Good shit.